Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about Hashimoto's thyroiditis and the autoimmune reactivity against the cerebellum, basically your brain. What do we need to look for when we have patients who have problems with the cerebellum or basically balance centers of our brain? When a patient comes in and they're diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and they have issues with what we call ataxia or gait disturbances. We need to look at other antibodies other than TPO antibody for thyroid to see if they actually have issues with the cerebellum. So let's take a look. Hashimoto's potential autoimmune reaction against cerebellum, right? So basically patients who have Hashimoto's thyroiditis can have an increased reactivity against cerebellum, or part of the brain. What do we look for in terms of antibodies? If you have TPO antibody, which is for Hashimoto's thyroiditis, or against your thyroid gland, cross-reactivity against the cerebellum is highly likely. Then we have GAD65, or glutamic acid decarboxylase 65, and that is an autoimmune process of the cerebellum. Now, GAD65 is associated with other autoimmunities, such as uh, type 1 diabetes or stiff person syndrome. But basically, GAD or glutamic acid decarboxylase is an enzyme that converts uh, neurotransmitters to GABA, right, which is inhibitory, calming. So the cerebellum has what we call Purkinje cells which is highly GABAergic, right? So GAD65, if you have the enzyme and you have antibodies against it, you have a hard time producing GABA. You're relaxing uh, neurotransmitters. So you can have issues or um, dysfunction of the cerebellum as a, as a side effect. You can also check for cerebellum antibodies and then you can also do something called myelin basic protein. So myelin is something that covers the nerve. It's a sheet. And then you can have demyelination, breakdown of that sheet, right? And then you can develop cerebellar issues. Transglutaminase 6, which is another neurological or neuronal antibody, very common with patients who have gluten issues. So there are, there's a term called gluten ataxia, because gluten can cross-react with transglutaminase 6 and then develop issues with the cerebellum, right? So when we have a patient that comes in and they have long-standing Hashimoto's thyroiditis, but they also complain about balance issues, then we need to go ahead and check for these antibodies to see if they have a secondary autoimmune disease uh, to Hashimoto's thyroiditis, primarily the cerebellum. So when we look at it in our office, oftentimes patients come in and they have issues with gluten, issues with thyroid, and then issues with cerebellum. Because there are a lot of cross-reactive proteins within that uh, triangle. So we have to look at all of the clinical picture in order to help someone who has Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I hope that makes sense. Look for different antibodies that affect the cerebellum if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Okay? And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe and share with friends and family because we're going to deliver some quality information about Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Next week, we're going to talk about all the symptoms related to cerebellum and what kind of testing we do in office to look at patients who have cerebellar issues. Okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung. We're Clinical Excellence meets excellent results. We'll see you guys next week on the healthy side.